And we are back to discuss House of the Dragon, uh, Season 1, Episode 2, The Rogue Prince. Hot D, of course. As always, we're available on SoundCloud and iTunes. Consider checking us out on those platforms. And if you do, please leave us a review. It would help out a lot. This episode. Hmm. Yes. This episode. Um, uh, you. So, so I got a lot of flack for last week's episode on my channel because people were calling yeah, you grumpy yeah. they were saying <laughs> they were saying it's, nothing it's, can it's, it's satisfy amazing. you it's amazing that i can be like oh no it's really great it's like it's like seven out of ten eight out of ten like i really liked it and yet still everybody's like oh, man preston's so fucking negative what a fucking bitter piece of shit he's gonna so die there's alone. two sides to this there's two <laughs> sides to this the first side is it's the internet like what are you gonna do it's it's either a yeah, zero yeah, yeah. or a 10 out of 10 there's no middle ground yeah, That's the first it, side. The second side is yeah. this is a good sign because that means people are like like strongly defending House of the Dragon, which means Game of Thrones is back, baby. Like we're, we're back years, in action. Hundred years. Hundred um, years. I do I do think that there's another part of it and, mm. and you learn this as as a content creator and you actually learn it as as in, in most jobs as well when you get performance um reviews and um uh, is uh it takes like 20 pieces of of praise to make up for like one piece of criticism like you know like you can you can you can say like oh you know you're like you did this you did a great you did b great you did c great ah but d could use some work and like the person's going to be livid so you've got you know there's this whole like ratio on 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 criticism to to praise and this is the whole thing with like even content creators you know as a content creator that you go and you you focus and fixate on the negative comments oh, yeah. like i just fixated on the negative comments and so i think it's the same like i can i can put out a review where i'm praising it like i'm praising it like like three quarters of the time but people are going to fixate on that 25 percent where i give criticism no no 110 percent yeah. because because you're you're you were very lukewarm on the pilot so therefore you know you're awful you're a douche how dare you who the fuck are you how dare get me. out of here yeah um but no episode two uh was essentially one giant targaryen dating simulator that's essentially what it was <laughs> uh you know viserys has to choose you know between uh, this uh, little girl or this other little girl. That's it. There's no. That's that's all the matches. That's the funny thing. Um, and going so going back um and watching the episode again because there's there's a lot of things that are quite funny about about the little girl versus the little girl uh situation, right? Because like um yeah, I mean let's start with Lena Lena versus Allison versus versus Emma Aaron. So we in the book. Um, Viserys and, and this is the thing is like Viserys' hypocrisy. They like actually kept his hypocrisy at, like they're, they're, they're in many ways. They're so very true to the source material, but like in the source material, Vis Viserys is an absolute hypocrite because he married Emma Aaron at 11 and then bedded her at 12. And, and, um, and then later when it, when it came time to, to marry again and they and they put forward lena's name they you know he said no i'm not going to marry her she's too young i'm going to marry allison um though in the source material allison's like uh 18 um while lena's like 12 and so you know maybe he had the bad experience obviously with emma aaron being young and, and her having pregnancy complications and eventually dying from being bedded too young but you know this idea, this idea that like ah oh, like I can't do something because she's too young when you already did it like you already did mm -hmm. it all right you're you're already a dude you're already a dickhead like rewatching this episode like the actor makes Viserys seem like a super nice guy but no when you really examine Viserys' actions he's a douche he's an absolute <laughs> douche um so in this one they kept the hypocrisy again because it was like uh Lena said. Yeah, I'm 12, but you don't have to bed me until I'm 14. And he, he still gets this, like, cringe face, you know, like, ah. But Alicent is, like, 15 or 16 in this. Like, they've aged her down to make her the same age as, as Rhaenyra, and I think Rhaenyra's 15. Yes, so, Rhaenyra. Like, we, have, we, have, we have confirmation that Rhaenyra in this episode is 15. 
Yeah, so Rhaenyra's 15, so Allison's like of an age with her, so I'm assuming she's 15 or 16 as well. So for him to like cringe and be like, oh God, like I, I can only better when she's like 14. And then he goes and he has sex with a 15 year old, like like, <laughs> like a, the next day. Like, you fucking douche. <laughs> like, you fucking dickhead. <laughs> you absolute his, fucking his, dickhead. His bullshit also uh, goes into the next episode. Did you watch the preview for episode three? I did, I did. So, in the, in the preview for episode three, he and uh, Rhaenyra are having an argument. I'm assuming he's going to make Rhaenyra marry uh, Laenor. And uh, even mm. he, he yells at her, even I'm not above tradition. Well, huh? What, what about that one time right. you named a female heir? That wasn't tradition. There's a whole thing about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then married outside of the Targaryen line. Right. You know? like, so, yeah, he's, he's a, he's, yeah. Viserys is Viserys is a douche. He's he he seems like a nice guy, but this is the thing is is his like the fact that he is a pushover means that he he gets pushed into you know doing immoral things. He's not strong enough to to, to stand up uh, for his convictions. He doesn't really have any convictions. Like he seems like a nice guy, but he doesn't really have any convictions because everybody just kind of. He's, he's, everybody just gets him to do whatever they want. Well, to be fair, so. he's the best Westerosi king we've seen so far because the other three were horrendous. You had Robert, the drunken <laughs> the drunken douche. You had uh, Joffrey with his unnecessary cruelty. And then you had Tommen, who was really fucking weak and just a pushover. Yeah, then, I mean, he's, he's kind of on par with Tommen. No, right? no, yeah. no, 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 no. Uh, Viserys, like, has a firm, a firm hand every now and then. Like, him... Like, he, he stands up to Damon. Like, you know, if this, if this was Tommen and Tommen was having that conversation with Damon in the pilot, Tommen would have folded and, and would have said, you know what, never mind, you're right, you're the heir. Viserys holds true. Yeah, fair enough. So, you know, and not only that, though, but yeah. when, was the last time you, when was the last time you saw a, a, a king in Westeros go around the table and ask everyone their opinions individually? He got, he got some... And you know, rewatching the episode again, uh, I, I still say I still uh, stay true that my favorite scene is still the Rainey's Rhaenyra scene. That was a really good scene, and my second favorite scene is weirdly Viserys talking to L- Lionel Strong. Mm. <laughs> like it's such a weird thing because I was just like I don't know what it like why Lionel Strong is so captivating in that scene because all they're doing is talking about politics. But it's just how Lionel is delivering every line. It's just like so interesting and cap. Like I don't know why I like that scene. So the funny much. thing about that scene is that he makes very good points. And in my head, based off like your whole rule of thumb with Ice and Fire, the person who makes very good points is the one everybody ignores. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he, he's Pycel and Cersei Four. Yeah, he's Catelyn and <laughs> Clash, right? Yeah, he's cattle in clash. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's always right. <laughs> and it's so funny because, um, and what was done really well about this episode is like comparing Lionel Strong and Melos. Melos also gives the same advice as Lionel Strong, but because Melos, you know, says it in a certain certain way and gives an eye look to Otto Hightower at this at a certain time you know that he doesn't really mean it. Like, he's giving this kind of weak argument and then um, then allowing Hightower to, to undermine it. Um, while Lionel Strong, like, I'm completely convinced that Lionel Strong in the show is not part of the conspiracy. Like, he was just like, yeah, you need you need to marry Lena. Like, it's just a smart move, dude. <laughs> like, bro, bro, it's just a smart move. <laughs> so, um. Uh, what 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 else? In, well, in the beginning um, okay, of the episode, let's, let's Ryan see. Redwine dies, um, and we have the uh, your boy, your boy Ryan Ryan Redwine. Right, he uh, the, he uh, dies, and we have the 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 Kingsguard selection immediately, and they got those those candidates. Well, here re- very re- quick. Re- rewind rewinding just a little bit. I wanted to point out that the episode um, begins and ends ends with crabs. Like there is a there is a book ending of the episode where we, where we where we open with the the uh the stepstone situation and we end with the stepstone situation and that the episode is is like bookended like that um so how everything is like really leading to like it's it it's an interest you know i think it's done pretty well because it's like you open with the stepstones and you're like well everything's going to lead to this well how is everything going to lead to this 
well, and it's this completely different like plot that you wouldn't think would be related, but it gets mm-hmm. there, you know. So, but yes, we we then yeah we then get to uh, um, Rhaenyra claiming that she um, or uh, Corlys complaining about the stepstones. Viserys not want to doing any doesn't want to do anything, and then and then Rhaenyra. Um, says like why don't you send dragon riders you fucking idiot you're like we've got all these dra- like <laughs> all these people ride dragons uh the funny thing about that is is during that conversation with Corlys and the small council uh Beesbury says that Westeros has never engaged in open warfare with the free cities um mm. in fire and blood do we ever see any like like minor like in the shadows type of warfare with the free cities so there's a there, there's a lot of like there is a there is a war that Aegon the Conqueror fights with Volantis before his invasion of the <clears throat> of Westeros. But that doesn't count. The only thing I can I can think off the top of my head is when uh, uh, I think it was Barth goes to Bravos and he threatens the Sea Lord because of the stolen eggs. Yeah, yeah, and then there's there's the Mirish faction that broke off from Mir that invaded Tarth that killed. Amen, but that wasn't really that wasn't really mere. It was like this mirish faction that got kicked out. So I mean, there's like little things here and there, but but Beesbury's comment, yeah, I, I would, you know, it's more or less true. Like, there's been no official like uh, war between Westeros and and the uh, and the Free Cities. I do like, by the way, how Seven rules over everything in the uh, in the series. They they really they really went all out like making those action figures for for these people. You know you know me I love those things. Oh my god! Like like had had imagine it like if every job you applied to you arrived and somebody and you're there for an interview and somebody has made a fucking like map <laughs> marker like, to represent action you? figure yeah. for you to represent you like holy shit you'd be like well, what why did you create this <laughs> you know? christian cole poor guy just gets like a little wooden <laughs> little wooden thing he gets that bar right he this is why bar. i'm assuming because all those look fantastic i'm assuming each house representative came with their own yeah. prepared and gave it to them no i think they just had like a uh i think they just have like a room with a whole bunch, a whole <laughs> the bunch guy makes of them. them. No, I think they made. I, I imagine they just have a bunch of extras for various for various reasons. Like any time the king wants to do something where he needs to have a representation of each house, he'll, they'll like bring it out. I mean, it's it's just <laughs> like crafting that table and crafting these markers just for this like short interview. It just seems too much. There must be like a closet somewhere with all of the with all of the houses. Well, props for them going the extra mile on on doing all of this. I really appreciate it. I love stuff like this. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's pretty it's pretty insane. So like, yeah, you know, we so we got the song, we got the nightingales for House Karen. We've got a vulture with a heart in its talons for Corbray. We have a a um a boar for Craycall. We have a hunter for Tarly. We ha- and the um. The the golden tree for Rowan. Yeah, I assume it's Rowan just because it's a golden. It looks like a golden tree, though the 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 actual banner is completely faded, so you can't see anything. It just looks like a a white empty banner. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, my my assumption is that it's a golden tree for House Rowan. And then which which one are we missing? The one the the uh, there's Malister. Malister, right? The sea guard with the uh, um, with the eagle. Yeah. We also get a mention of the Ironborn in the scene. Otto Hightower is mm. like, maybe you should pick uh, one of either Craycole or Malister. And Malister specifically because, you know, Seaguard, they're usually a good defense against the Ironborn incursions. But Otto is what? Trying to weaken the king? And Rhaenyra makes a very good point. The king should be protected by someone with battle experience, not tourney knights who have never, you know, really killed a man. Um, she does but make Otto a wants point, it to yeah. be all political. All political. I mean, she 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 does make a point, but if you're really interested in people uh, guarding the king and it being the best job, it wouldn't be a lifetime appointment, <laughs> like, <laughs> right? You wouldn't have these old men um, guarding the king. We're supposed to we're supposed to think that Joffrey and Cersei are are dickish for like firing Barristan, but let's be honest, he was too old. Like he shouldn't have been there. You know? well, all in Barristan's the... defense, he fucked up like 10 harpies by himself. 
outnumbered. I, I know, I know, I know. And Book Barrison is is even more of a badass. So it's uh it's pretty mm -hmm. yeah. So you know, but he's in his sixties, like come on, so um but nonetheless they they uh they 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 choose Sir Kristen, who is now I don't know if they like realized that they fucked up in the first episode by calling him Dornish because now they're like, oh, he's from the Dornish marches and he like fought in a war against the Dornish, like, oh, against the Dornish incursion, which is from the book. There was a Dornish war, which now all of a sudden, like Rainey's comment about how like <laughs> there was nothing but peace is a little exaggerated. Um, but uh, but, you know, is he is he Dornish having fought in a Dornish war or, you know, is it just. A, they're just a fuck up that they're fixing now i think i think uh because of how uh you know uh the stormlands border dorn yeah every now and then you get a mix of people coming in between people fucking and you know mix and matching and there it is i mean why not why not i think the actor is uh half indian um, regardless he's uh they got they i think so far from what we can see I think they got a good Christian Cole. Um, let me see. Also, yeah, I mean, he's, he's you know he's quite he's quite dashing. He's uh, I mean, the character is very likable so far, despite the sucker flail. <laughs> <laughs> You're still on that? Fuck! Oh my god, <laughs> sucker flails. Uh, so the other part of the episode is besides the dating simulator. Uh, the other part of the episode is Damon throwing his tantrum and specifically doing things to piss off the king. Which mm. is essentially uh, trying to give his his uh, his his paramour uh, the egg that Rhaenyra specifically chose for her her baby brother before he died. Now this is kind of different from the books, right? Because if I recall correctly, and we we just went through Fire and Blood, yeah, she's supposed to have been pregnant already. Yeah, no, in the book, in the book, it, well, what's interesting is that is how far you know the the material can be considered biased or or whatever like um in the book material yeah everybody thinks she's pregnant and it's it's different in that you know Damon hasn't taken an army to fortify Dragonstone or anything like that he just went there and decided to chill out and cuz Targaryens can do that generally like when when Targaryens get mad at each other they just kind of go to Dragonstone and chill <laughs> um that's just <laughs> that's where like Alisane went after she like had her feuds with with um with Jaharis and and, and whatever. And but, Dream Fire Reina. Yeah. It's just a place to chill, you know. Um you know, and it's kind of the uh I mean I guess Stannis is technically supposed to be on Dragonstone, but he he's actually spends most of his time on the small council, like before they had their but he I guess has his has his um tiff with his brother and like goes off and uh, ends up, go, you know, flees back to Dragonstone. So, so somewhere in the middle of Jaehaerys's reign, they decided that 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 um, Prince of Dragonstone was a was the heir title, which is which is kind of interesting because under under Aenys, um, so you know Aenys was usurped by his brother, uh, um, Magor. But at the same time, Magor had all of the items that that people associate with being the heir. Like everyone called him Prince of Dragonstone and he had Blackfire. And and I think he had did he have Dark Sister as well? Like he was just he was just um like which which later like the sword is specifically said like, oh you give Blackfire to the person that you think is should you know follow you, which is the whole right. Damon Blackfire situation and Prince of Dragonstone is the heir title. So you know, there is this idea that actually maybe Magor was the heir and like Aenys really did want Magor to follow him after his death and Magor was, was not a usurper and everyone was just being a dick <laughs> like to him. So, but, um, Speaking but, of yeah, Magor, he, he doesn't appear in the intro credits. He does not. He does not. You could argue it's because the intro of the blood follows Rainey's and then it goes towards her line. And then towards, you know, Aenys and then onwards. Right. I mean, you know, if we want to get into the blood thing, I mean, there, there's there's definitely some people that appear in the in the in the in it that don't. Um, I, I think there's this one scene where I'm like, oh, is that supposed to be 
Viserys and Damon's younger brother who died at age one because there is like one scene where there's like an extra seal where you're where no one knows what it is but um we, we discussed this briefly on your after party live stream but that i have to say yeah. and i i know some people are gonna get pissy with this but that that opening sequence i'm glad they they brought back the song on one hand it's it seems a little lazy but on the other hand if it ain't broke don't fix it okay um yeah, sure but the opening like it's so like the segment moves a little too fast like you can't really catch mm-hmm. anything what made the original game of thrones so cool was that like you know it's a map you know where everything is you know which houses control where you know what locations we'll be visiting in that you're, episode you're, you're learning you're learning things mm-hmm. like about geography and what what cities are going to appear in the episode mm-hmm. so you're getting primed for it you know, like that first time where we where we see the map go to Dorne and we're like, oh, Dorne. I, I just remember being so pumped. Like, we're finally going to see Dorne, even though it didn't say Sun Spirit Water Gardens. It's, it just said <laughs> the city of Dorne. But still, we were like, Dorne, you know, like it's like a big deal. Or the first time you saw like uh, Bravos, like the Titan of Bravos and all that. Yeah, that know? was cool. I like that. We, we spent a little too many times, to- a little too, too many times in Pentos and uh, the uh, Dothraki, uh, the Dothraki Sea. So... Yeah. But uh, the opening in general just kind of sucked because some of the icons were a little weird. Like for Rainies, it was a dragon skull with a bolt through it, which, okay, book readers, we know what that is. But uh, is that what that is? That's what oh. that is. And then if you look really closely, Visenya's is like a, I think it's a, like a the hilt of a sword. I have no clue. All of it moves yeah, so quickly. You can barely see Visenya, yeah. All of it moves so quickly. Yeah, I, Some of it's all like far in the distance. I, I with, with right. confidence, I can't say who's who and what's what until the showrunners come out and say it. Also, like the blood flowing is also like weird because it's like, you know, Ra- you know, Rhaenys is not Aegon's child. Rhaenys, you know, like I understand that like her blood is supposed to merge with his, but his blood is flowing to her and then it's flowing to Aenys, which is not really like what should be going on, right? You know, so. Uh, uh, it's, uh, the, the other, th- I will say, the one cool thing is that when a when a person dies, their icon, yeah. their token, gets submerged in blood, which is submerged which is re- in blood, right? Right, which is really cool. And then, like, the only reason I I, I found Alisane and Jaharis was because. There's like a huge splatter that goes into multiple directions. So yeah, there's like there's like all these kids, mm-hmm. and so they just kind of get like spewing off in all the directions. Like that one's pretty obvious, right? Like, of, you know. And I'm assuming next episode the opening crawl will include the high tower sigil above uh, over uh, Emma Aaron's uh, sigil, which okay, but like. I did not like it. I think it was done very poorly. If anything, I think what they should have done instead was have the original map or a map like it. If, what I would have done was had what was have us follow the Targaryens all the way from Old Valyria to Dragonstone, and then after they start, you know, landing on Dragonstone, several blood splits off into like multiple areas of Westeros, and then you know we see them conquering uh, the Vale, the Reach, the North, blah 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 blah. blah. All like in just something like that, you know. Like you want to, you want to put blood yeah. and lineage in there. This is how you do it. Um, but no, this was. I, I'm gonna skip it every time, which is blasphemy to think about in Game of Thrones. But skipping it every time, it's it was not that great. Mm. I mean, I'll probably still watch it and, and then complain about <laughs> it, and then complain about it and pitch about it every time. Of course, of course, yeah. it's the proper thing to do. What did you think about the the standoff on Dragonstone with Damon and Otto Hightower? Uh, I thought it made no sense. Um, hmm. Like, it was really stupid. Like, okay, first, like, what, like, was, was, like, I'm just, like, babbling because it makes no sense to me. Like, was Otto Hightower trying to get himself killed? Like, what was he doing? Like, first of all, first of all, they say, oh, he's taken a small army to fortify Dragonstone. Okay, let's go take it back. Let's get 20 household knights. Like, what What do you fucking do? Like, you're trying to storm a castle, break into a fucking, like, fortress with 20 dudes, like, 20 good men? I mean, I guess 20 good men can do it. <laughs> but, like, he literally took 20 good men. Like, like it's so dumb. Like, like if there were five guys at Dragonstone, they could, they could like, kill them, right? Like, oh, they're up there. They're trying to climb the wall. Boy, boiling oil like that's it shoot him with some arrows like yeah of course like 20 guys like they took 20 guys and that that's just like even going on the fact that, that Damon has a fucking dragon 
Like, like you're taking 20 guys, but even ignoring the fact that Damon is a fucking dragon and can fry you, like, immediately. Like, why? Why would you only take 20 people? And then, like, when they finally get there, it's like, Damon takes his army of 20 and goes to the bridge. Like, why would you, why would you do that? Like, why wouldn't you stay in your castle? And, and why would you... <laughs> It was just so, I mean, I guess Damon's like, well, I have a dragon. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Okay. Like, but it was no plan. There was no plan at all. It was so dumb. It was well, so dumb. he came dumb. out there because he thought Viserys would be there. Because he even asked, where's the king? He thought he thought the king would come. It, it's all, I mean, like Damon, I said, it's all Damon a Damon can do whatever he wants because he has a dragon. That's fine. I, I, I accept that Damon could meet him on the bridge. But why would Otto go? Like, why would, uh, and why, why did he bring Melos? Why are you bringing the maester? Like it reminds me of it reminds me of um did you see the second suicide squad? No, I did not. Oh my god, there's there's so it's kind of funny. So they they have a driver. And at one point they like drive up to some place they're trying to they're they're trying to infiltrate and and do something at. And the driver gets out and like runs in with them. And anyway, there's a big gunfight and the driver gets killed and one and one of the characters is like is like I forgot this guy's name, but it's like, you know, Guillermo died. Oh my God. They killed Guillermo. And everybody's like, who? And they're like, you know, the, our driver. And they're like, that was his name. Why did he come in with us? And they're all like, all like what was he doing? Why didn't he wait in the car? Like, uh, like, this, like this is whole scene of this. It's hilarious. Um, but it's the same thing. Like why, why would you bring Melos? What? What? <laughs> what are you doing? Maybe to show like, Otto's overconfidence. Like maybe he thought he could take everybody, and you know there'd be a couple injuries, and I I don't know. Oh, I, that's a good oh, point. Oh my god, it was so dumb. It was so dumb. <laughs> it was it was it was so dumb. Ugh. But no, Rhaenyra uh, steps in. She does exactly what Rhaenyra she. Rhaenyra uh, steps in. Yeah, the she told everybody in the first uh, couple minutes of the episode. She uh, she talks uh, Damon down, and uh, once I, she I, arrives, it gets better. Because like I like that conversation between Rhaenyra and Damon. Mm-hmm. Like all of a sudden, you know, you're like she, she like makes him feel so awkward. Like yeah, you gonna kill me? Fucking kill me. Uh... And then when he tosses that egg like a fucking football. <laughs> He's such a douche. He's he's so he's like a mix between Jamie and Ramsey. I love it. I love oh, it. Oh yeah. He's yeah. such an ass. Yeah. He's uh, with a little he's got a quite a bit of emo in him though, too. <laughs> yeah. By the way, like this is something I, I always I always keep I think I said this to you in the live stream uh after party, but he really I think this is great casting because he really does like a weirdo inbred looking guy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. know you criticized him when he got cast because he's not well, that I mean, handsome. It's a different, you know, it's a different interpretation. It's, you know, the, the one character we did have an idea about in the source material was Damon. And Matt Smith has taken it in a different direction. And it works because Matt Smith is a fucking professional and he's really good at his job. Um, and so, you know, it works. It's it's fine. Yeah. But, uh, you know, who what didn't work for me was uh, Misara's accent. What the fuck was that? What is that? Yeah, it came off like not even like French, but I had someone in my comment <laughs> section saying like I'm French. That doesn't sound like it's from France. It sounds like maybe like like you said like Haitian or Cajun or West African. I like said some... this. No, 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 no. Uh, 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 some French speakers in my comment section. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which is yeah. weird because she's like British, Japanese, and Argentine. So I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Where I, the fuck I, did that I, come I, from? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I imagine she studied French at some point. Um, I mean, she was she was doing the she was doing the the accent on the like, you know, it, it it was a better French accent than I can do, obviously. But I've never studied French. Like, it's it sounds like she's at least studied French, but it didn't come off very well, you know. So it was uh it was weird. It was weird. But I I thought it was still interesting that they chose to make her not not pregnant and that she has this entire other story to her like yeah i'm not even going to be your tool like i'm not just like here to i'm not like attaching myself to you to have your to have your baby and like be queen like which is weird that her motivation is the exact opposite of alicent right Mm. like 
she has no interest in producing a Targaryen child and like putting it on the throne, right? Like that's kind of funny. That's kind of clever. Like that Missaria's motivation is just completely foreign to everybody in this fucking game, right? Like everybody's game is like, who can I marry to, to royalty to place on the throne? And she's just like, no, like that's, I don't want kids. Like, oh, <laughs> that's, well, that's interesting. <laughs> it's definitely new. Um, we'll have to see yeah. how that plays out because I don't think we've seen enough of her to really uh, get a good get a good feel for it. Because in in the yeah. in the books, isn't she like she's his 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 paramour, and then Viserys makes him send her away, and then she loses the baby en route, and then he gets super pissed about that, and, and then she disappears for like twenty years, <laughs> and then comes back and becomes like master yeah. of whispers, whispers for yeah. Rhaenyra. <laughs> And then, yeah, so I guess they're giving the character more to do than just that, which is fine. And they're giving her yeah, a bit yeah. more depth. That's fine, too. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Like, I, I'm because of, like, what happened in the last couple of seasons of Thrones, I'm always hesitant when it doesn't follow source material. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, what else happened in this episode? It was very short. Uh, I think it's the shortest episode of the season. Which short, is, which is yeah. Great. It's 50 minutes, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I mean... Lena talks to Viserys about Vagar. Um, I love I love the memes about Lena asking where Vagar is. Like, yeah, where's this powerful nuclear weapon that you? That you where is this? I want to know where it is. <laughs> it's true. Like, oh, no one knows. Like, what really? The most powerful dragon. Like, like if anyone claimed it, like any random person claimed it. Like, they would rule the world. Like, I, I found like... that very weird that there are some dragons out there, especially Vagar, that are not really accounted for. Because even Lena yeah. says, well, uh, there are rumors that in Spice Town, some of the people in Spice Town hear her songs, which is on Driftmark. So, okay. Yeah. But there should be so some... she's going to go out, yeah, and find it, yeah. Right. There should be some, like, there should be some guys who know where it is. People should be on that shit. <laughs> like, you hear a rumor... That Vagar might be it, yeah. You let's let's do something about that. <laughs> like it's a fucking dragon. Oh man. Uh, Christian. By the way, Christian Cole. I loved his one line um, uh, where he's 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 talking to Damon. Crisp, Crispin Cole. You know, yeah. He calls him he calls him Crispin, and then he's like uh, he's like I for, I've forgotten. And he's like yeah. He gives him that one that that line like perhaps uh, my prince remembers when I knocked him off his horse. Perfect. I love yeah, him. Sure. <laughs> I love him. Uh, in the next episode, we do see in the previews that uh, I, I think Christian Cole and Rainier are going to have some bonding because she's going to get all uh, in the previews. She's going to get all pissy and right off, and it's a blink and you'll miss it. But she's in the forest and something ambushes her, and I guess mm. uh, uh, Christian Cole. This is where he comes in and, and like saves her, and they have their moment to shine. So far, we don't have Ly- uh, Lionel Strong um, son, who is also supposed to be her lover, supposedly. Right, we don't. We have not yet seen Breakbones, Har- Harwin Strong, or Larry Strong, who are f- more important than their dad. <laughs> you know, which so it's interesting that the dad was given the large role and they have not appeared yet. So yeah, we like we haven't we haven't we haven't seen them yet. So okay, and uh, Corley's I thought did a really good job this episode. It, it still kind of annoys me the thing the showrunner said. I know you. You roll your eyes because what does it matter? I, the actor's doing a really good job as Corley's. I'm I'm really enjoying it. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, he's yeah, fantastic. And uh, I have to say, um, there there <clears throat> is one mistake in the episode. I don't know if you noticed this, but impeachable? Huh? Oh, Har Harwin uh, Lionel Strong calls uh, uses the word impeachable instead of impeccable. I didn't notice that. Are you are you serious? I oh, didn't, yeah. Yeah, I didn't yeah. notice that. Which, the... which is fu- which? Yeah, which is funny because they mean the exact opposite things. <laughs> um, impeachable is the exact opposite of impeccable. So it's, uh, <laughs> I didn't that it's, I didn't um, notice. Yeah. Um, let me show you this. Yeah, yeah. Go back. Go back to that that scene. He says. He says. Oh, she has impeachable um, uh, stock. You're like, are you sure? Means impeccable. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was not the mistake I was talking about. The other mistake I was I sent it to you on Facebook just now. The other mistake is that uh, David doesn't have Dark Sister. In fact, he has Corley's sword on his hilt. I mean, on his uh, on his belt. What what what? That's Corley's sword, and you know that's Corley's sword because it has the clamshell uh, on the pommel. The picture you gave me is too dark, but let me brighten it up. <laughs> 
I mean, I, I so so I see that circular oval thing above the the there. No, it's 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 a clamshell. I'll I'll, I'll brighten it up for you. Hold on. Here. Okay. I got you covered. Yeah, it's it's the clamshell. He doesn't have Dark Sister, but he has Corlys's sword for some reason. I don't know why. He says he says impeachable. No, no, he doesn't. Let me see this. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. Go back. Go Let back. Let me find this bullshit out. I I did not notice that at all. What the fuck? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a Sandra, it's a Sandra Stark moment. <laughs> a Sandra Stark moment. Uh, he does, he does have a very good line. Pr- proud men don't like to look up. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, he's he, he's a great scene. You know, like I, I I had to go back and I was like I was like, is there some sort of like alternate definition of impeachable? Here it is. Hold on, let me put this on. Um. Uh, here, let me put this on. The daughter of the wealthiest house in the realm. She comes from unimpeachable Valerian stock. Oh, oh, fuck. No, I'm wrong. He said unimpeachable. <laughs> well, then, if, uh, fine. Unimpeachable is the same as impeccable. Okay. <laughs> Fair How dare enough. you, Preston? I'm sorry. The script, the script is airtight. How dare you? <laughs> I mean, it's it's a double negative. Um... <laughs> Unimpeachable. Ugh, well, is it? Ugh, gotta go, go to the linguistics of impeachable, because like you're lucky man. you corrected yourself. Otherwise, okay. the comments section will be a blaze about this. A blaze, I say. I know. I know. Unimpeachable. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. All right. All but, right. Uh, props to the Rainier actress, uh, Millie, Millie uh, Alcock. I th- <laughs> think that's her name. Um, the look she gives Alicent when Viserys announces that he's going to marry Alicent. The look she gives. She's a good actress. Fucking well done. Oh, oh yeah. She's, 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 it was great. It was, of course, really stupid that Alicent's in the room and everybody's just like, <laughs> like, why yeah, is she there? That, see, but, now that you mention that. But, you know, you know, it's whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> so, um, but other than that, it's like, you know, uh, it was a fine episode. It was it was interesting to hear that both Trey and and um uh Phil liked it more than the pilot. Mm. Um I don't know if I would I would say I liked it more than the pilot. I think I liked the pilot a bit more. I think I gave the pilot a 7.5. This is a nice 7. I you know, I would I would say that uh I think it doesn't have any weakness. It doesn't have as many weaknesses but it doesn't have as many strengths. So like, mm. you know, so I, I also did not like it as much as the pilot, but um, like, I do think that the beginning was quite slow, but uh, um, I think there was some really great conversations between people. Like I think Rhaenyra and Damon's conversation is fantastic. Even when it, half of it's in high Valerian, I think the Lionel strong conversation is great. Um, I even though the act even though Masaria's accent is off, I still am fascinated with this relationship and her character. Um, and let's see, I I oh I love the subtleness of 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 Archmaester Melos. I mean, uh, Grandmaster Melos and um, Corlys Velaryon's like uh, angry speeches. Oh, and I, and of course my my favorite part is is the rainy's uh Rhaenyra, so no there's just a lot of great character moments between people so um i think that that all worked but uh you know there was no there was no farting butt in the camera <laughs> like i said in my review um the pilot episode you have to look at it a bit harsher than all the other episodes because the pilot's job is to get you hooked day one every episode afterwards like like you can just you know treat it normally, but the pilot always has you always have to look at it a little harsher because it needs to do its job and it needs to do it very well. Episode two, just like in season one of Thrones, the King's Road. Episode two is supposed to like you know there's there's a there's a formula to this. Episode two and three sets everything up going forward. Four and five is where shit hits the fan. Six, seven, and eight is where you know we we deal with these issues and everything goes goes down. Nine is the dreaded episode that changes everything and turns everything upside down. Then ten is where we uh, set up what's going to happen in season two while also having some big moments. So 
because this is House of the Dragon, different showrunners, I don't know if that's going to be the formula for this show going forward, but uh, I can forgive episode two for being a little slow. And it, it, and it is. It's, it's a little slow. Yeah, I was, like, I was like, I don't know if your formula really works like for the later seasons of Game of Thrones either, where it's like... Uh, well, the know, later seasons like... of Game of Thrones are special because, yeah, like like I said before, HBO four stages. It's like Game episode Game. one, they, they sit around and do nothing. And then they sit around and do nothing. And which, then they, which season? And then, eight? <laughs> all of them. And they sit around and do nothing. And then they sit around and do nothing. And then they spend like all of their CGI money why, like, on like a huge battle. And then they sit around and do nothing. For which, for which season? Eight? That's like both seven and eight, I would say. Like, they just kind of there's a there's a lot of killing time, and then a lot of then a lot of then a huge battle. Yeah, no, and yeah. Then a lot of killing time, and then a huge battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one thing I am curious about, though, is how well did episode two do in the ratings? Mm. Yeah, I'm fascinated with that. Yeah, we'll see. Can, we'll can, see. can you look that up? Because I'm sure the numbers are out. Um. Uh. Okay. Ratings, The Rogue Prince, House of the Dragon, Episode 2. That's my... Oh, here we go. Here we go. It's on Variety. Okay. Oh. Bad or good? Um, Episode 2 actually drew more viewers. Oh, shit. There we go. We're back in... Okay, well, Episode... Because episode two was slower, episode three is going to be the real. I, I wonder how much we're going to get for episode three. That's going to be the real test. Because episode one, a lot of people yeah. did really enjoy. It was a fairly decent start. This episode was a bit slower to set everything up, of course. But I want to see how much um, people come back for in episode three. But that's, that's now, a good now, sign. Th- now, some people, some people may wonder, how can it be that episode two would have a a bigger premiere than episode one. And the reason is, is that um, at the premiere moment, you you have a certain number of viewers, but then the rest of the week people watched. And then like, and then, then when the next premiere came, then everyone like wanted to watch it immediately. So like when people talk about like these premiere numbers, it's like who wanted to see it immediately. So uh, the, the premiere was eventually watched 20 by 20 million um views i don't know if, you know 20 million people 20 million views was the was the original and then i mean it started at 10 million the night and then it then over the week it got an additional 10 you could argue that some so people now, chose to yeah. skip it because the, the episode leaked yeah sure or you know or um you know, maybe maybe they read reviews and said, "Yeah, it's, uh, maybe I'll give it a shot." Gonna be and, honest with you, and... hope it leaks again. If uh, because uh, I love getting the head start on that shit, I love it. Mm, yeah. mm, 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 mm. I love it so great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it says, but they say that they're actually the now for the premiere episode, the numbers are approaching twenty five million. Oh damn, that's great. So that's that's fun. Mm-hmm. I, I'm happy. You know, once again, like you and I are very lukewarm on the first two episodes, and uh, they're they're decent. They were very decent, bordering on good. Good, decent, yeah. But I'm happy people are, like, coming out and defending it. Um, happy and not happy at the same time. It's better sweet because then we get called assholes and all this crap. <laughs> so yeah, you yeah. get called a grumpy old man. I get called a douche. It's the usual. But I'm happy people are defending it as much as they are because that just means Game of Thrones is back. Because I don't remember anybody defending Season 7 and 8 as much as they're defending House of the Dragon. So clearly... Clearly, there's uh, the fan base is coming back in force, and uh, yeah, um, it seems like the casual fans are also really enjoying it, which is a really good sign. Um, I don't want 100 seasons, 100 years. I would like three seasons, realistically, and then maybe season four, we do um, Egg on the Unhappy, or you know, so on and so, and just go go forward until Robert's Rebellion. That's what I would like, realistically. <laughs> we'll see. I mean. We'll see if they can, you know, I mean, Star Wars, I suppose there's people still are watching, even though there's just all these shows that we're getting inundated with. So maybe cinematic universe for Game of Thrones. I don't know. Uh, If we're going to do a cinematic universe, I wonder if they're going to like make the title House of the Wolf and do like the Starks next. Or like House of the Lion. Well, if you're doing snow, you're already getting you're already getting a start. Uh, so. <laughs> or House of the Lion. Like I, I'm down with. Look, if they want to do like spinoffs where it's like House of the Wolf, House of the Lion, I'm completely down with that. But 
what I would say is let it be like five episodes. It does not need to be like 30 seasons. We don't need Supernatural here with 17 seasons. Please, love of God. House of the Wolf, House of the, the, the Lion. Or ha- House of the Kraken. <laughs> Maybe a movie for House of the Kraken. I don't know. But we don't need that like, crazy big thing. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to say about the episode? Because this was, no, no, that, there's that, really not much to talk about as, you know, straightforward, cut and dry. No, no, that's about it. Yeah. Also, uh, before we sign off, are you ready? For episode three? No, for Lord of the Rings in a couple of days, baby! <laughs> <laughs> Lord of the Rings! The Rings of Power! In a, in two, oh, prepare, because it's going to be two-episode premiere. Two-episode premiere, really? Mm-hmm. And then, later on in September, three-episode premiere for Andor. Oh, my God. Oh, just, <laughs> just, just shoot me. Just shoot me. On that note, guys, thank you so much for joining us. As always, we'll see you all next time. Have a good one.